Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of People Power Insurgency in the Philippines from 1981 to 1986. This is part of the coin series. This is volume 9. No, volume 11. My Roman numerals are off. Volume 11 in the coin series. This is designed by Kenneth T, put out by GMT Games. And it is, you know, as usual, pretty large, 3 inch box from GMT. It is listed as one to three players. It is not a four player coin game. You just have three factions and it will use the solo deck system for uh, for coin. So let's dig into it and see what you get inside. So being a teenager during this during this era, uh, my knowledge of the Philippines is woefully ignorant. I know they were always kind of our ally, and I remember the Marcoses, Imelda Marcos, was there, and I remember she had a lot of shoes, but I don't know if that's gonna come into play in this game or not, but it wouldn't surprise me, so. All right, so, start out with the playbook. It's gonna give you a, wow, this is thick. It's like 44 pages. Quick start for returning coin players. So if you've played the coin series, and I'm sure most of you have, this will give you the key differences here between this game and previous coin games. And then we've got the People Power tutorial and other you know, historical notes, uh, designer's notes, uh, counter manifest, which is always nice. If you pick up a used copy, you can always see what you got in it and the recommended reading bibliography, so you have a homework assignment. Paper Power Tutorial, new players should start here. Read this, follow the rules, follow the rule, read the rules as it tells you to, and then, and then execute on your board what's happening here and you learn how to play the game, so. That's pretty cool, lots of graphics, lots of graphic illustrations of rules and uh, actions you're gonna take and so forth. Notes on the cards. It's a good thing it's printed on the great GMT matte finish paper so it doesn't get a lot of glare. You can see there's a lot of glare on the pages. Now we've got the rules of playbook which is very small. It's only 16 pages. No, 20. it's 20 pages. It goes at 16 starts the scenarios. Again, also in the glossy, uh, the, the matte finished cardstock. And list your components, explains how the map works, who the forces are, the operations you can take, victory markers. These are a little more dense in some ways, text wise, a lot of text, but, but really it's, if you do read through this as directed and follow the playbook, you'll pick this up in no time. So you get to victory conditions on about page 13. And you have election rounds, and then you basically have key terms. And set up for scenarios. Staying at a standard scenario, 83 to 86. And then we have an extended scenario from 81 to 86. There's two scenarios. All right, and then we have Bonifacio, the card-based non-player rules and reference booklet. This is a lot bigger. This is 32, 28 pages. I'm guessing it's way off today. And explains how to use the non-player. And it's named after Andres Bonifacio. It's a non-player system for people power that may be used to replace any player faction with a non-player faction. A deck of cards, several player aid tables guide the decisions made by each non-player faction. Bonifacio is named in honor of Andres Bonifacio, a 19th century Filipino revolutionary leader often called the father of the Philippine Revolution and considered one of the national heroes of the Philippines. So this is similar to the, instead of the just strict flow chart that they used to use in the initial coin games, this is a card driven system where there's cards for each faction and you, you flip them over and follow those instructions. So this is all the instructions for using that. And choosing operations. And golden rules for Bonifacio. Non-player factions follow the rules almost. 
They abide by all applicable people power rules with these exceptions. They never remove pieces from the map to available when lacking pieces for an operation. They don't track or spend resources, and they roll against an activation number to limit total spaces selected for operations. So then we've got one sheet of pre-rounded counters. We got a, we have a sheet, but it's obviously not full. You get a lot of empty counters here. We have control markers, we have patronage, we've got a US aid, um, overflow counters, support, oppose, support counters, terror, resist, overflow markers, and protest markers. And there's some spares here that are noted. So you're only gonna use four in the game, but there's two spares. Everything else seems to be the way they're supposed to be. And these are pre-rounded, so they punch very cleanly. Very thick. All right, so now we've got three, let's see, three faction boards here. And get them out. I'm going to want to come out. There we go. All right, so our factions are going to be the government, the NPA, and the reformers. So this gives you instructions for each side, your main scenario setups. Who am I? This is kind of nice. It's, this gives you a little background. Who am I? You are the government. As Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos, you were elected as president in 65 and led the Philippines as a conjugal dictatorship. At the end of martial law in 81, you have faced increasing opposition from rival political parties, the reformers, and have been fighting against a Maoist socialist insurgency, the MPA, since 69. So it kind of gives you background of who you are and what your motive is. How do you win? How do you stop the government from winning? How do you stop the reformers? How do you stop the reformers of the MPA? How do you stop the government and the, the MPA? So, very nice touch. I haven't seen those before. And then we've got the Bonifacio. We know that's the non-player faction. So this is the non-player aid card to guide you through. If you're playing and with the, the events, the eligibility, what the different factions as the non-player will do, their movement priorities based on who they are and then the election round instructions. Nice double whip uh, coded card stock for that. And then we've got our three copies, let's see. Yeah, three copies of the operations guide for the different factions. So two, three copies of it, one for each player if you're not soloing it. And then, uh, so you've got the reformers, operations, and special abilities the NPA and the government's same, and then an election round. And then we have our map. It is a very small map. It's only four panels, so it's about 17 by 22. This is a, yeah, it's a very tiny, tiny map. So you got your point track on around the around the border. You got your election cards your overflow markers, your map of the Philippines and the city of Manila, Cebu, uh, Zamboanga, and Davao. And then the sequence of play for the various cards as they come up. Very nice mounted map. I like the, I know it's ocean, but I like the blue color. It's predominant for this island nation. Very nice. And then we have three dice, one in each faction color. So I think, uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like yellow one, four, three to one. So. And then what would a coin game be without a big bag of wooden pieces? So we've got, we've got discs and we've got markers, the usual great GMT quality. Uh, support, resistance markers in there, various colored cubes for the different factions. We got that, and then we've got our deck of cards. They're all bound together. And I can see we've got our solo cards there, so let's take a look at those. Okay, so the first thing we got here is we've got the... Okay, so we've got our one stack here of Let's see, well, we got something different here. We got, well, let's take a look at these. Let's go in order here. This is kind of wild. We got a lot of different stuff going here. Put that there. 
All right, so we've got our AI cards first. So you got the set for the reformers. And it looks like there's six, six of each. They're not numbered. Looks like six, yeah, six cards of each. So there's the reformers in yellow, the MPA in red, and the government. So when you're playing, like if you're playing the MPA, then you know, you'd use the government and the reformers cards to, uh, to uh, control the bot. And then we've got these things here, Acts of Desperation. It looks like we've got a deck for each, a few cards for each group. So here's the MPA, they have three Acts of Desperation cards. And you can play those, I guess. You have more resistance than reformer bases on the map, set one opposition space to neutral at least one strike on the map. Patron patronage is minus two. And then remove a reformer base from a space with terror. Then of at least three terror, patronage is minus one. So these are acts of desperation. I guess the, the rules will tell you when you can play them. But so we have looks like three for each each of the factions. And then we've got personalities for each faction. It's an interesting twist. So we'll look at the MPA again. We have Jose Maria Sisson, advocates rural insurgency. Insurgent momentum. The MPA rally may replace one guerrilla with a base in countryside spaces. So we'll look at a personality here for the reformers. We got Colonel Gregorio Honasan, ram sides with protesters. After government roundup, remove one troop from each selected space. For a government roundup. Looks like there's four personalities for each. And then we've got General Fidel Ramos for the government. Constable, Constabulary, Constabulary, assist riot police. Roundup may use troops in addition to police. So yeah, there's four personalities for each faction. And then we get to the heart of coin. We get our event deck. And it looks like there are 37 cards, including the election round. So we get through this pretty quick fast playing game here. So you can, you know, again, coin, you turn the events over, they apply to a certain group and then, you know, they can take actions based on it. And then we got several election cards here. All right. And then you get, a, obviously, the insert, cardboard insert that'll hold all the, all the tokens down here like it did and the board and the rules. So anyway, if you pick up a copy of People Power Volume 11 in the coin series, you are going to get those three faction color-coded dice. Oops, a tie. You're gonna get the six times three uh, AI deck. You're gonna get a deck of personalities and acts of desperation for each faction. You're gonna get the 37 card event deck. You're gonna get the usual coin, wonderful, glorious bag of wooden bits. You're gonna get that 30, uh, 22 by 17 mounted game board. You're gonna get three copies of the operations guides for each of the factions. One, three copies, each one covers each of the factions, I should say, as well as the election round. The Bonifacio non-player aid card for the AI bot that can play any of the, any of the factions is a non-player. A reference card with instructions for how to play each faction. And one sheet of pre-rounded punch counters. The Bonifacio rule guidebook. Rules of play. The 16 page rules of play book or 20 page rules of play book. And the excuse, rules of play book. And then the playbook, 44 page people power playbook to guide you through learning the game. And that is everything that comes in People Power Insurgency in the Philippines 1981 to 1986 from GNT Games, Volume 11 of the Coin Series, designed by Kenneth T. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!